How do there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV. My name is Matthew Edgar and I was on the PDC Pro Tour from 2011 to 2022. And during that time, I had a lot of insights and a lot of information and a lot of stories that I share with you here on Edgar TV in the insights section right here on YouTube. And today what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you about my last days as a PDC Tour card holder. And I'm going to go to the last Pro Tour that I played in as my very first stopping point for this. I went into this event needing a semi-final which would have done two things it would have kept my pdc tour card and also qualified me for the world championships so that's why it was one of those sort of double whammies because the seven and a half thousand pounds for getting to the world championship would have been enough to keep me clear of the cutoff point that being the 64th position in the world now, I went into this event and I wasn't nervous. I don't get nervous on these last days. If you have a look through the history books, you'll see Q School, last day, qualified and had my best day the last time I was there. UK Open, quarterfinal, the qualifiers on the day I needed to get quite far. Lost 6-5 to Adrian Lewis. Quarterfinal of a pro tour when I needed a quarterfinal to confirm a place in the Players' Championship Finals at Minehead. World Championship, last day. So I qualify for things quite late because on these days you go in and you tend to feel the room. The room's nervous. People are playing for tour cards, world championships, players' championships. There's all sorts of different things on the line. And you tend to find that people are vying for position. Even at the top end, people are trying to get seeded or get better seedings into different events. So lots of nerves. And I tend to feed off other people's nerves or their negative energy to make me feel positive rather than me joining in and feeling that sort of nervous energy as well. So I do tend to get good vibes. I needed it on this day. I was drawn on the top board, board number one, and I was playing a player and on the bottom half, the seeded player. And I thought, oh, this is a bit shit, which you'll get the reference if you watch this channel quite a bit. Played Martin Klermacher in the first round. Decent enough game. Got the victory there. And I thought, well, worst case scenario, I've earned a bit of money. I knew I had a lot of tasks ahead of me at this point. It wasn't even that I was thinking of that semi-final point at this stage of beating Claire Macker. Second round, I played Robert Thornton, who was having a very good year at the time. He did go on then to win the Seniors World Championship as well. And I won this game quite convincingly. It was about 6-2, I believe, if memory serves me right. And I felt good at this point. I'm in the board final. There's been two good players, Claire Macker and Thornton. But now I've got to come up against the top guy. It's coming up against Michael Smith, who's our current world number one and world champion. And on the floor, you don't want to be playing Michael Smith. I hit a couple of good finishes in this. A nice bullseye finish along the way to win the match as well. And that was the first time I beat Michael Smith. I played Michael Smith previously a couple of times. But... Going into this, I did feel really confident and feel really good about the day. I didn't know what the end of the season looked like for him. He was probably quite happy to see the back end of the year get into those major events. But for me, this was a vital game. To get that victory there over Michael Smith was a big, big one for me and kept my hopes alive. Now this is where I start thinking about it. I start thinking about the possibilities. I start thinking about the likelihood of can I go this far and get this. I didn't know who was ahead of me. I haven't seen the draw or mapped it out. I just knew that I was now getting the draw and the seeding position of that top player. So I knew it wasn't going to be or didn't think it was going to be one of those top, top players until that point. Last 16 though, I played Luke Humphreys, the man who's just recently won the World Grand Prix. And me and Luke get on really well. Decent uh, relationship between the two of us we've sort of crossed paths many times throughout our careers head to head we're probably about level i believe but it's sort of that, that journey and that friendship that sort of gained that game luke um and me had a decent enough game i won it on double 15 it was a, a last leg sort of shootout and after the game we sort of had a bit of embrace like luke put his arms around me i put my arms around luke and i, I said to luke i says Boy, am I trying. I'm trying. And he said to me, he's like, I know what today means to you. I know what you've got to go do. Go do it. Luke was always very good, not just at being self-motivated for himself, but he was very, very good at sort of speaking to you and sort of encouraging you as well. I remember about a week or two before that, um... 
I was saying, oh, I think I'm in trouble here. I think I might be losing my card this year. And he's like, but you're good enough to get yourself out of this situation. And I went, well, I don't know. And he's like, shut up. He called me an idiot. He goes, you're an absolute idiot. He goes, you know you are. And this was a really nice moment. And then like he, he just said, like, finish the job. Go get it done. I didn't know that the quarterfinals waiting for me was Michael Van Gerwen. Just what you want, isn't it? In the game that gets you through to the semi-final and probably gives you everything you need, you get Michael Van Gerwen. He was on the streaming board. I actually started off really well. I think I took a 2-1 lead in this one. Now, Michael Van Gerwen in this game was sort of giving me opportunities. Michael doing Michael things. He wants a 1-6-7. He doesn't go for it. He hits the treble. He hits the 19. doesn't go for the ball. He hits the big 18 to give himself a, a set-up shot. And I, kept, I punished him early on with that. And missed the 170 as well which was on the bullseye, which would have gave me a couple of legs advantage. When you talk about moments that sort of could potentially change history or your life or your career or how things pan out, that could have been one of them, that 170. I mean, I did take it to beat Gary Anderson at the Super Series, but I couldn't take it there against Michael Van Gogh in, in that situation. Now, as you probably guessed, Michael Van Gogh went on to win that match. He beat me in the quarterfinals. After the game, we had a really good chat. Um, we shook hands, and I said to Michael after the game, I says, don't know if you realise, but that game has just cost me my PDC tour card. And he says, well, you shouldn't have been so shit then, should you? And I, th I thought, you know, before anyone jumps in on the comment section, I get on great with Michael. There's no, like, I know, it, 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 he's not being serious. Tongue in cheek, that's Michael. He's, he's very boisterous and brash. We had a good chat sort of afterwards. And it sort of came to light as well that he sort of was glad how it happened in the fact that, not that he took that off, but that I told him after the match. Because he's one of those sort of characters that if I would have told him before the match, he might have took that the wrong way. As if like maybe to say I was sort of asking for a favour, asking for a handout, like trying to play the sympathy card with him. For which case, he would have absolutely annihilated me. And he said he would have tried even harder. So he actually really respected the fact that I didn't bring it up until after the game. Now... For me, it was disappointing to lose that match, but I was very proud of the, the run that I had. Claire Macker, Thornton, Smith and Luke Humphreys. Four good wins. Got me some money as well. A couple of thousand pounds. Who's going to grumble at that, eh? That, that was not a bad thing. But for me, that, that was sort of it at, at that point. I knew that, that... For me, I don't think anyone loses a tour card until they lose at Q School because you've still got the chance to go and keep it. I think when you lose at Q School and the 128 players are announced, that's when you lose a tour card. I did still have the World Championship qualifiers to go, for which case, again, I thought I was going to go and win that, but I ended up losing out in the third game to Nick Kenny, which was... It was a very good game. It was a really, really good game, and I can put that down to three darts. Three darts at double 16. I missed them. He took it out on the ball, and that was the thing that separated the two players on that day. Had I won that game... Because this was during COVID times, what happened is all the reserves ended up getting in. So even if I'd have got through that game and lost, I would have still got in the World Championship as a reserve player, which would have kept me my tour card. So I was so, so close on multiple occasions, one game away essentially, and just a couple of legs away from keeping hold of that PDC tour card. As history told us, it actually worked out quite well for me in the end. But at that period of time, disappointment. Now... What did that mean for me? And what was the reaction? Now, this is something I'd say where, from a player that's experienced it, maybe there could be some improvements made to this side of things. Because actually, what was the reaction? There wasn't one. I didn't get a message. I didn't get an email. I didn't get a letter. I didn't get anything to tell me that I'd lost my tour card. Um, and that this is the system in place or this or the other. I had to sort of work it out myself through public knowledge. You know, um, we don't get told certain things as players. We sort of have to be aware of the rankings. And what you tend to do is we tend to find people on Twitter that was really good at 
stats or really good at tracking things um, or use the darts ranking website so that's how i got the information that i'd lost the card not because it was sort of presented to me so that was a bit disappointing now at the point i lost the card i looked at the reserve list i was so far down the reserve list for the world championship i thought there's no way unless x amount of people get covid I'm getting in this world championship and if they did I'd probably be one of about three players in the world championship so I'd have been a semi-finalist before it even started that's how far down I believe I was so I actually messaged across and I says as I'm not going to be used in the world championship I'm not going to be used in any element of PDC darts now for the duration of our agreement, uh, the contract, the, the PDC tour card. The contract runs out as of January the 1st, I believe it is, or when the World Championship is done. That's when the contract ends. I reached out and I says, um, is there a chance that, because I'm not going to be used for anything, there's no darts for me to go and play now, there's nothing on this calendar for me until Q School, which I let them know I was intending to play in. I said, the Lakeside Qualifiers is coming up. Would I be allowed to go and play in the Lakeside Qualifiers and go and play at Lakeside as I've got nothing to play here? And I, I, it was rejected. I wasn't allowed to go and play that Lakeside Qualifier, which was, I'd love to have done it, actually, to have gone and played that because I felt really good at the time still. I was playing good darts. I just had that run on the Pro Tour and then that really good game with Nick Kenny. So I think I was in a good position there to go and get a qualification place, but it was turned down. I then went to go to Q School, lost the very last game. You see a bit of a pattern here as well. So, so close. Um, last day, first three days, played well, didn't get the results. Last day, had a big run all the way through to the final game and then lost out to Nathan Rafferty. That was my last days on the PDC Pro Tour and the experience that came with that. Now, from that point, I was instantly contacted to go and play what is now the Super Series and sort of just picked up different bits along the way. And it actually worked out to be quite a good thing for me. But when I look back on that last day, I look back at it with quite a lot of pride because I look back at it and think about how much fight or how much bottle determination I've shown within that last day to try and just get that last little bit. But... It turned out a bridge too far. I was always around that point, around that sort of cut-off mark. I was tend to be around 55 to 65, so to speak, in the rankings. Never really was able to step that next bit at that period of time, but never really looked like dropping down out of that. As long as you're making the World Championships and the Players' Championship Finals, you'll keep your tour card. And that's what I was doing year on year, just making those sort of uh, bigger events at the back end of the year, which kept me fully within that system. Hope you have enjoyed this sort of look over my final days on the PDC tour. It was probably not the story people expected. People probably expecting lots of nerves and stories of sleepless nights. But for me, it just was never the case. And if you look back to the interview I did on here with Luke Humphreys... When we talked to me and Luke talked about when we both debuted at the World Championships and we said how it was nothing and there was no sort of like nerves around that last day or that big day getting on that big stage. It was just like a flatness. That's how I tend to find those really, really big moments. They're so big, you almost just feel numb. Hope you've enjoyed this look, guys. Hit a thumbs up. I'll catch you soon for some more Edgar TV. Edgar TV.